Hi. Uh, as a as a foreword to this uh, particular video, um, I used to work on PC and XT generation hardware uh, when I was much younger, um, about 15 years ago, and that's actually what I started out on, and that's some of the hardware that I worked on um, that actually got me into learning how computers work and how to repair them and how to upgrade them. So I started out in the in the in the old generation of stuff when everyone else my age was working on uh, Windows 3.1 and Windows 95 era equipment. So at one point I was quite knowledgeable in the innards and outards of, uh, of XT, specifically XT generation hardware. I used to read manuals and books and that, that was my life when I was in middle school. Um, so I used to know quite a bit. Unfortunately I haven't really worked on an XT or even a an early PC um, in over a decade. So I took this IBM uh, clone that I found on the side of the road and I yanked the hard drive and controller which was in um, a Seagate uh, 44 megabyte RLL drive that turned out to be manufactured in 1989 and I took the what I thought were high density uh, five and a quarter inch drives 1.2 megabyte and the controller, thinking that I was going to put all of this into the Tandy uh, 1000. However, I hit some compatibility issues with the um, with getting the the controller to work in conjunction with the internal controller, which I couldn't properly disable. So I was never able to get the the controller that I salvaged to work. But what I was able to do was use the turns out the drives weren't even high density they were low density drives or double density and I got one of them to work in conjunction with the um, the internal controller but because Tandy is really funky in how they design their systems uh, pin 1 on the controller or on the cable is actually pin 34 so that caused some issues um, another thing the hard disk drive worked perfectly to boot it up first try so that way I can thank God for small miracles there. Um, but anyway, it turned out these drives were low density anyway, and my <clears throat> the, the end reasoning for me putting them in was to match the uh, hard disk drive faceplate. So you'll see in this video that I've, I had to go back and forth and, and play with a few things, and I finally got it to work to a, way, to a point that I want it to work. And I hope you enjoy watching it. Um, and uh, feel free to leave comments. Um, I know I made a lot of mistakes in this video, so um, I'm aware of that. And uh, all right, well, enjoy. Okay, we're on day two of let's resurrect this side of the road Freemason machine. And I've determined that there obviously is an internal memory problem. And in the old days, you didn't have a SIM dim or even sip sockets you had these dip sockets these are dip modules dual inline package wait is that right yeah i think so and um these are fully populated creating a 640 kilobyte bank of memory that's what all these chips are for now the problem with this is one of these chips is obviously bad or malfunctioning and um to be honest, I don't want to spend too much time or effort saving a machine that I really... It isn't really a genuine anything. It's just a generic PC, but it has a working hard drive and controller card. So what am I going to do with this stuff? Well, over here, I've got an IB... I'm sorry, I've got a Tandy 1000 SX. This was another freebie, obviously. And it does work. It is in immaculate condition. Uh, but most importantly, I have all the original boxes for it, too. This was a dual floppy, no hard drive configuration. And my plan here is to change that. Um, I'm going to try to stuff that Seagate drive and controller into the Tandy. And I have made a, an alarming discovery. This drive is not as old as I thought it was. Here's the side here. This, uh, you got to be very careful when handling these things because they're very fragile. 
more so than you'd think. Manufactured in 1989. I can tell because of this is this is the date stamp on the metal casting. So it could have been manufactured in 1990. Meaning, well, first off, this is the first time this drive has ever been formatted. That was uh, in my last video. Ever formatted in its entire life, judging by the dates on the documents. So that's um, pretty historical right there. Doctor, we're about to operate. Turns out, it is removable. Yay. Okay, we've just uh, installed a nice new floppy disk and hard disk set. Let's see what's going to happen. Let's see what's going to happen. Whoops. Okay, I don't like that solid floppy disk light. That means there's a compatibility issue. Um, well, it sees the hard drive. I can fix the floppy drive issue later. It's booting. It's booting. It's booting it. Oh, it booted. So that was a success. Okay, so now I've got to figure out where I went wrong with this floppy drive. It looks like my cable might be reversed. So let me uh, take a look at that and we'll see what happens. After a quick Google search, I was able to find the uh, service manual for this machine, the Tandy 1000 series. I, um, I don't recall exactly which site I found it on. I tried to retrieve it for this video and I couldn't find that uh, the exact site, but if you do a quick Google search for Tandy 1000 uh, manual or settings, you'll find I also found out why I can't run the high density drive on this controller card because it doesn't support it. So what I did is I took the um, controller card from the other machine and I stuffed it in, which supports high density drives. Um, I couldn't figure out how to disable the onboard controller, so I'm gonna have to re I may have to set a different IRQ. Uh, done by jumper settings on the card. So, let's see what happens. I'm not feeling very optimistic about this, but let's see if it does a floppy seek. Now I'll try to boot it from it. That's what we'll do. Okay, I don't think it worked. No, I don't think it worked at all. Let me go back to the drawing board. Worst case scenario, I'm going to have to put the original drive in and it'll just have to be mismatched. Oh well. Okay, I found a combination that does work. The original floppy drive without the extra controller card installed works just fine. Um, now, the reason I... Okay. Well, it's all back together. I suppose it doesn't look too bad. I mean, really, it doesn't. Um, I remember a lot of machines back in the day didn't have matching drives, but, you know, whatever. So, we'll fire it up. I'm going to copy DOS to the hard drive. And I'm going to... Yeah, I've got to copy up both disk 1 and disk 2 of DOS 3.3. Hopefully clean my house up. This is all from all the last two projects I've been working on. What a mess. I am a slob. Anyway, look at how fast this thing boots up, though. I mean, seriously, it's, it's just very quick. Now, with DOS 3.3, there is no installer, per se. Um, all you do is you format the drive first, run F-disk, and then and only then you copy both 1 and 2 to a DOS folder on the hard drive. Real easy to do. Um, I'm going to do it right now, and hopefully I can get the date and time to stick. I took the, um, I took that card with the built-in serial port and added that. The Tandy 1000 SX does not have a serial port. 
has one parallel and a proprietary light pen joystick port. That's it. So we now have a serial port and um, maybe I'll add a parallel port uh, someday. Okay, I got the drive working. This is the the drive that I thought was a, was a uh, 1.2 megabyte. Turns out it's not. It's actually a 360K. Um, I couldn't get it to work with the um, the proper controller. And during the research of trying to figure out what proper jumper settings are for the Fujitsu drive, I found out that it's only a 360. So then I hooked it up to the, to the factory original bus. And um, this is what I mean when I say Tandys are a little unusual. Now, this is the, the factory original cable. And when you look at the service manual on this machine, they always make a reference to this cable being too short. Not only is it too short for most applications, but the connector is reversed. Let me explain. On the motherboard, when you plug in this cable correctly, it should be somewhat like this. Pin 1, which is always the striped lead, actually plugs into pin 34 on the motherboard. So pin 1, which is supposed to be on the other side, is over here. Most five and a quarter inch floppy drives are, are set up like this, so that pin 1 is over on this side of the connector. However, on the TAC drives that the Tandy shipped with, pin 1 is on the other side, over here, and lines up perfectly with that connector. The problem with that, the factory cable cannot be twisted around and reversed. So you can't reverse the cable to accommodate the correct drive type. So while everything is lined up and engineered so that it works with, you know, with all this cable and everything's all messed up, it's, it was uh, actually wired that way. Um, when you go to install a different drive other than the factory drive, you're going to wind up with this problem. Um, so pin 1 winds up being pin 34, and it doesn't work. So I used just an industry standard uh, floppy drive cable, and it works just fine. I got it to boot right from the floppy drive, no problem. It's black, exactly what I'm looking for, because I want a black drive in there so that it matches. And, um... Yeah, that works still, so I'm going to still access drive C. Now I'm going to go ahead and format a disk and make sure it... Yeah, this is a double density. Not a high density, which is what 360K disks are. So I'm going to format... Drive A. There we go. And there we go. So now it works. Now I just have to tuck this all in. As part of the change, I added a Y connector to one of the power leads. Um, and here's, here's a good reason why. The power leads are only long enough to reach about here. And even that is pretty much a stretch. But with these TAC drives, I'm sorry, with the Fujitsu drives, the power connector is sort of in the middle here. The cable can barely stretch to that point, so I had to add a Y connector so that it will reach. Looks like this disc is no good. Nope, that's all for now. Until then. Now that it's all back together. Listen, that thing roared to life. You don't hear that anymore. So this is what it looks like now, and I think I'm very pleased with the way it came out. I'm glad I got this floppy drive to work. Um, that actually makes me very happy because I really wanted it to be a matching set. So there you have it. Now I'm going to start uh, scouring the planet for more software. And... Uh, Make some, make some use out of this thing. All done. And like I said, I still have the original boxes to this machine. Um, I have the monitor box and the system box, but unfortunately one of our custodians at work threw away the monitor box on me. I, I was very upset, but nevertheless.